What if I told you there was a way to purchase a second home for zero dollars and without having to spend a dime, you could create massive wealth? Well, I did exactly this a year ago and I'm going to tell you how you can do it as well, spending zero dollars on a second home by using your current home's equity. Now, if you own a home with equity, you are already in a great position. Building wealth through the equity inside of a property is such a great thing, but it's also deceiving because although it looks like you're doing extremely well on paper, your net worth is high due to the amount of equity you have in the property and you own such a strong asset, but your bank account doesn't quite reflect the wealth that you are building because all of that equity is wrapped up inside of your home. So what better way to put that equity to work than to purchase a secondary home that builds you wealth? First, we have to understand the basics. Home equity is the difference between what you owe on a property and the value of that property. Let's say that you own a home and it's worth $250,000. And let's say that you owe $200,000 on that property. That means that you have $50,000 of equity inside of that property. And over time, as your property appreciates year after year and you slowly pay down that mortgage, your equity spread will increase. And after a while, once you start noticing that your equity is increasing, it gives you more opportunities to build wealth, but it's also great because for whatever reason, if something bad were to happen, it could be your fallback plan to where you could sell that property and you know that you can take the equity inside of that house and then you could put it towards surviving in that instance. So let's go over the different ways that you can actually take out that equity inside of your house. Now, without actually selling your house, here are the three ways that you can access the equity inside of your house. The first being a home equity line of credit, AKA a HELOC. Now a HELOC is a revolving line of credit that you can access in form of equity inside of your house. Think of this very similar to a credit card in the way that you use it. You get approved for a certain amount, then they will give you a line of credit, a revolving line of credit for you to access, and you only pay on the money that you draw from that home equity line of credit. And once you draw money, you start paying towards it. Once you pay it off, then your balance is at zero and you can start using it again. Now a HELOC is broken down into two parts, a draw period and a repayment period. Now, typically it's about a 10 year period where you can draw from the actual HELOC. You can use it, pay it back, and then use it again. But once that 10 years or whatever the time limit is hits, then you go into the repayment period. So if you carry over a balance into the repayment period, that means that you will start paying towards the principal and interest. At first, when you're paying in the draw period, it's interest only. The one thing that you really have to look out for is that with a HELOC, you have a variable interest rate, meaning that the interest rate adjusts with the prime rate of the market. So even though you get approved for a 4.5% interest rate, that doesn't mean that in within a couple of months after using and drawing from the HELOC, that it goes up to a 6.5% because of the market adjusting. Now the second option is a home equity loan. Think of a home equity loan very similar to a car loan. You get approved for a certain amount, they will fund you that amount and you start paying on it right away. You typically have a fixed amount of time to pay it back with a fixed interest rate. This is really good for knowing exactly what you're getting yourself into and what to expect to pay for every single month, but you do have to start paying for it right away. So if you did not locate a secondary property yet, you'll still be paying on that property while you're searching for it. And lastly, you could do a cash out refinance. Now, this only makes sense in certain situations. If you have a 3.6% interest rate and you're going to take money out because you have a large equity spread and you refinance into a 8% interest rate, what we're seeing today, in late 2023, that's probably not a good idea. Even though you're able to access the cash and pull it out, your monthly mortgage is going to increase so much. So first things first, only do a cash out refinance if it makes sense with the interest rate. Obviously by taking money out and acquiring a new loan, that is going to increase your monthly mortgage, but make sure it's not a substantial amount and make sure that you are able to pay for it and you can afford it. A cash out refinance is basically taking out a new loan to pay off your old loan and also put money into your pocket. Now out of those three options, I opted for the home equity line of credit. The first reason I chose this option is because a cash out refinance wouldn't have worked because it would have raised my interest rate to the point where it just wouldn't make sense for my rental to have that high of an interest rate. And secondly, I didn't want to have a home equity loan to where I had a payment I had to pay for it. while I was looking for my next property and thinking about having to pay a monthly expense for something I haven't even purchased yet just didn't make sense to me. So a HELOC gave me all the time I needed to find that new property and when I located it, take action on it. 
I pulled the HELOC from our primary house at the time and used that for the down payment on this next property. The remaining amount that I financed through this property was from partial seller finance and a community bank. After all expenses, after the principal, interest, taxes, and insurance, all of the expenses that I have to pay for as a landlord, as well as paying back the HELOC and seller finance every single month, I am cash flowing about $400 every single month. Not only are my tenants paying off that property for me, I'm also cash flowing $400, and at the end of the year, I get to depreciate the property. Not to mention, it's in a great location and it's already appreciated about $50,000 since I purchased it. All things that you want when utilizing this strategy. So how do you do this? Now that you know all of the puzzles to the pieces, how do you actually put it together? Step one is you need to figure out what strategy you wanna use. If you wanna do a home equity line of credit, a home equity loan, or a cash out refinance. Now there's not one right answer and not everyone's gonna choose the same strategy. So pick the one that makes more sense for your situation. Step two is to go to a local bank and see their products, look at the one that you're going after and see what their loan to value is, which is how much they will loan you to the value of your property. Also make sure to check out the interest rates that they are providing and what they're seeing right now. And based off of going to a couple banks, you'll be able to decide which one is best for you. Now next is the fun part is you're starting to go out and look for your second property. But with this step, there's a set of criteria that you need to follow in order to purchase that next property. In other words, if this potential property does not meet this criteria, then you probably shouldn't purchase it. Number one, the property needs to cash flow after all of the expenses. After you pay everything every single month, the income coming in has to be more than what your expenses are. So in case anything were to happen to the property or you have a vacancy, you have money that you've been saving in order to put towards that and it doesn't have to come out of your pocket. Number two, you should have a six month reserve for this property before purchasing it. Now I am on the side of caution, but I really believe that having a reserve makes your mind so much less stressful and it makes you not worry day in and day out. If something were to happen to your property, how in the world are you going to figure it out? So make sure to keep that reserve. You have to buy a property in appreciating market. Meaning if you were to go back, contact your local real estate agent and see over the past five years, this property has continuously been appreciating. The last thing you wanna do is purchase a property that's not in an appreciating market because then that's another form of income that you are not receiving. And lastly, your income needs to be able to support the monthly mortgage on this new property regardless of if you have income on it or not. Once again, I'm on the side of caution, but you don't wanna purchase a property that you just can't afford. And if you follow these steps, you will make sure to set yourself up for success and limit yourself from being over leveraged. But the biggest struggle with this, purchasing a secondary home, is analyzing it to make sure that you are actually cash flowing and that it's a good deal. Which is why you should check out this video next where I go into depth how to actually analyze a property, make sure it's a good deal, and make sure you're buying it right. I also give out my rental property calculator for free, so check it out. Thank you, and I will see you in the next one. Happy investing.